To celebrate the return of football, TIFO is offering 30-day free trials to The Athletic, the home of the world's best football writing. After taking charge of Arsenal at the end of December, Mikel Arteta swiftly established a sense of routine. Having spent the first couple of months in rented accommodation, he then moved his family into a home en route between the training ground at London Colney and the Emirates Stadium. At the start of each day, Arteta receives training data and fitness information on his phone. On a typical morning, pre-coronavirus, his staff would arrive at the training ground at around 7.30am for breakfast. They'd eat, then meet in Arteta's office to go over the morning's training session, having made a plan the previous day. The doctor would update the staff on any medical issues or concerns before the players arrive at 9.45am to prepare. There are pre-training meetings with individuals or positional units before the team congregate at 11am to be led through clips and key messages by Arteta. They train and then there are more meetings with individuals or smaller groups. The players leave and the coaches set about planning the next day's session. Now during lockdown that routine needed to be redrawn. Arteta and his assistants remained in touch with every senior squad member, setting tactical tasks such as analysing entire matches or specific clips, while head of performance Shad Forsyth coordinated the delivery of fitness equipment and bespoke training programmes to the players at their homes. Online yoga sessions were also set up, which the likes of Hector Bayerin, Rob Holding and Bukayo Saka took part in. And his two assistants have quickly established roles. Steve Round is more focused on trying to establish an elite culture and helping Arteta navigate the personal relationships that come with the job, while Albert Stoivenberg's emphasis is more on the tactical and technical side. And Arteta himself is someone interested in diverse thinking. During lockdown, he was part of online webinars with Los Angeles Rams coach Sean McVay, England rugby union boss Eddie Jones, and even a US military general who served in Afghanistan. He's keen to broaden his perspective. He is of course also trying to change the way that Arsenal play, particularly out from the back. Previously, they merely passed the ball around, often before they came under any pressure. Now, they're under instruction to commit an opposition player before making a pass thus taking a man out of the game. During the lockdown, the goalkeepers were also asked to pay specific attention to their starting position, as Arteta also intends to involve them more in that evolution. And changes are occurring around him too. In the final few years of Wenger's reign, there was a squad planning committee comprised of Wenger, Chief Executive Ivan Gazidis, Negotiator Dick Law, and Scouts Steve Rowley and Francis Cahigal. Now Arteta has less autonomy than Wenger had. He joins Edu Gaspar, Hasfami, Raul Sanyehi, and Vinay Venkatesham in the current committee, sometimes with the scouting department involved too. The key difference is that it's the club who determine which positions Arsenal will target, with Arteta's input mainly due to suitability. If Arsenal require a new fullback, what sort of fullbacks suit his purposes? Now, sometimes a deal will present itself through the executive team's contact led approach. In the case of Cedric Suarez, who was signed in January, elements of the deal were already in place and all that was required was Arteta's approval. Fortunately, he and the wider recruitment team have a shared view of what constitutes an Arsenal player, someone comfortable in possession who can help Arteta dictate the game. But the most significant changes being pursued are internal. Arteta was an appointment made with the club's culture in mind. There is also a conviction to Arteta that inspires belief. It was present in the rousing speech he gave ahead of the victory over Manchester United on New Year's Day, in the pep talk he had with Rhys Nelson on the touchline at the Vitality Stadium, and in the public disciplining and subsequent dropping of Matteo Genduzzi after a misdemeanour in Dubai. In a squad meeting on June the 12th, Arteta looked his players in the eyes and told them that the club needed a change in attitude. That was followed up with a progressive team selection for the trip to Manchester City on June the 17th, which clearly rewarded attitude and application shown during the preparatory sessions for the restart, or lack of it. It's suggestive of a human focus. Any coach in the modern game has to confront the challenge of balancing the different personalities in the dressing room. Not everybody is as committed, as confident, or as quick to learn. But tolerant as he is of those differences, there are lines that Arteta won't tolerate being crossed. 
In the week prior to the restart, in the second and final warm-up game at the Emirates, Arsenal eased off and were beaten by Brentford, with footage of the sloppy goals conceded being shared widely on social media. The nature of certain performances left Arteta angry, and while the result didn't matter, he was quick to verbalise his disappointment. Those who don't share his commitment to the highest standards won't be at Arsenal for long. So, he demands utter professionalism, but he's not without a sense of humour. The players tend not to use the term boss, which was the traditional greeting for Arteta's predecessors. Now it's Mr. or even Mikel. And in recent months, the club's code of conduct has seen a playful new addition imported from Manchester City, the Wheel of Fortune. If a player commits a minor indiscretion, such as being late for a team meeting, they must spin the wheel and risk a range of forfeits, ranging from modest fines to cleaning the dressing room or even having to polish the captain's car. The way he presents his ideas with immediate clarity has been appreciated. Arteta's personality shone through from day one. He did the rounds, introducing himself with strong fundamental messages, those non-negotiables he expresses with no room for misunderstanding. Nobody could miss the main points about how he likes things done, with the mix of positivity, drive and determination. He made the kind of impression that makes people around a club want to work for him. And the leadership at Arsenal certainly feel like they've made the right decision. The club's director, Josh Kroenke, had several conversations with Arteta before interviewing him in person, and now stays in regular touch with his head coach via WhatsApp and FaceTime. When Mikel and I sat down one-on-one -on -one to talk about him coming to Arsenal, he walked me through things that he'd seen on the pitch and took me through several things he would like to implement from a coaching standpoint, Kronke told The Athletic. But really what we spoke about was club culture and setting a new tone. It's going to take some time. We've got a long road ahead of us, he acknowledges. But the culture is changing. Let's be honest, Arsenal are weirder than ever. So, who better to guide you through the oddity than James McNicholas, David Ornstein and Amy Lawrence? And now, you can get a 30-day free trial to check it out. The Athletic brought you the exclusive on Martinelli's injury layoff, who should Arsenal sign to replace Ozil, how will Pepe improve next year, and tons more behind-the-scenes info in David Ornstein's Monday column. You can also listen to Handbrake Off, The Athletic's dedicated Arsenal podcast with Lee Dixon and the whole gang. So, for your 30-day free trial, visit theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football and get reading. Thanks for watching today's video.